it's unctuous, and it's just irresistible. Which was phenomenal. I was blown away. I wanted to stay. <laughs> I didn't want to leave. Everybody. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. Redwood Credit Union offers personal and business banking, mobile access, and nationwide ATMs. It's banking for people who call this home and the future we're building together. Redwood Credit Union. National recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, writer, artist, and culinary historian Miriam Kaysen takes us to her favorite Middle Eastern cafe. Not only can you dine in, but if inspired, you can buy the ingredients and make the meal yourself. And third grade teacher, Natalie Ashby, guides us to the coast to a cozy cove and an even cozier dining room on Tamales Bay. But first, security guard and organic beer lover, Omar Montez, shares his favorite brewery and tapas restaurant. Small bites and craft beer are complemented by charcuterie and flamenco dancing at Thirsty Bear Brewing Company. Thirsty Bear was named, funny story, it was named after an uh, escaped circus bear who had uh, stolen a beer from a gentleman sitting in a park in Russia. Slapped the man, took his beer, got drunk, and then they had to take him back to the circus. <laughs> Welcome to Thirsty Bear. We're the first and only certified organic brewery. Uh, my name's Tim Mullins. I'm the general manager here. We went organic in our beer production in 2007. We got our green business certification in 2010. Thirsty Bear was a top 100 restaurant for the first five years it was open. It was very unique for a brew pub to have Spanish cuisine. I mean, tapas is historically a communal food. You ordered a lot of small plates and everybody shared, much like beer. We serve nine different beers on tap. Uh, really only two are flagships or that we have all the time. One's our Panda Bear Ale and our Howard Street IPA. All the other beers rotate. And our brewmaster, Brendan, brews all of them. They're all really his recipes and his creations. We all love what we're doing here. Beer is fun, food is fun, it's a fun environment. You know, people come here to have a good time and a fun time. So it's really about just the passion for the product and the people that work here. Yeah, thank you. Now, Omar, you are a beer lover, yes. right? And this is San Francisco's oldest brew pub. Yeah. I mean, 1996. This has been around 20-plus years. Yeah. How did you first discover it? Well, so about two years ago, I, st I picked up uh, guitar lessons from one of my in in Spanish oh. instructors. You know, I really love the music. I like flamenco music. I, I was learning how to play it. And he just told me one day, hey, check out this uh, place in the city. Because they have, Thirsty Beer has flamenco dancing exactly, on Monday nights. Exactly. He never even brought up the food or the drinks. Right. I just went to check out the show, and I was really impressed by the quality of the beer, the quality of the food. I said, I'm going to come back. That's awesome, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you get your flamenco in. Yeah. So, so um, is there a dish that you really enjoy? Uh, for appetizers, yeah. I will get the uh, piquillo peppers. Mm -hmm. it's, it's served in a really nice white plate. It has a lot of color, and it's filled with tuna. And on the side, it has aioli um, sauce, just mm -hmm. kind of drizzled around the plate with a little bit of onions and chives. I have no idea what else is on there, <laughs> but it's really good. I also started with the piquillo peppers, which I thought were wonderful. It was a um, cilantro puree salsa mm -hmm. that it's in, and with the tuna. Mm -hmm. but that was very good. Uh, we tried another one that we liked called zarzuela, which mm -hmm. is a seafood stew and in a nice broth. 
It was right. very good. What about macaroni and cheese? I did have macaroni and cheese, did actually. That was did. one of our tapas. Yeah, and it comes out in a little cast iron pot, and it's fairly large shells, so the shells just have the ooey gooey yeah. <laughs> sharp ooey cheddar. You can say that, ooey gooey. <laughs> yes. It's a term. It's a term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, sharp cheddar cheese um, inside, and uh, again, it's a fairly large portion, so three people can share it easily, mm -hmm. and, and it's wonderful with the beer selection. Mm -hmm. And we also have the empanadas, oh, which yeah. have malt in the dough. Yeah, so, yeah. again, perfect pairing with a beer. The pastry was really soft and fluffy, and it was filled with some pork, mm -hmm. but we did have some other wonderful appetizers. We had the pork ribs, mm -hmm. which were in this those. juicy sauce, and it just melted off the yeah, bone, right off um, the and it was in a little raclette, and so we shared it as a table. We also started with the nine beer taster, yeah. so we tried <laughs> every single beer. That's what they the have on draft, right? Yes. Nine beers. And I discovered so many like wonderfully creative, unusual flavors. Yeah. Do you have a favorite beer? You want to talk about the beers for a bit? The one I've been trying the, recently is called the Kolsch, which mm -hmm. is like German ale. It's nice and gold. Uh, again, it's very smooth, you know, not bitter mm -hmm. at all. It's ice cold. It goes down real well. It goes great with the piquillo pepper. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Did you have indulge in any of the of the beers or drinks? I did. My companion had the beer sampler, which mm -hmm. I tasted, and I really liked the Tolstoy's Inkwell. Mm -hmm. It's a very dark beer, obviously. And I also had a glass of sangria, and their sangria is really interesting. Yeah. It's not sweet, mm -hmm. and they add brandy to mm -hmm. it, three different spices, mm -hmm. and uh, it comes with a fruit garnish, which I put into the drink to get the flavors of the fruit in it. And I thought mm -hmm. it was delightful. Mm -hmm. What do you often get for your main course? If I'm really hungry, I'll go for the Thirsty Bear Burger. And it's nice, lightly charred meat. You know, it has arugula lettuce on top. The bun is just nice and warm. It's not crunchy, but it's that right amount. Mm -hmm. We had the uh, paella verduras, mm -hmm. which was a vegetable paella, which was very nice. It had roasted zucchini and peppers and onions, and then chopped spinach and peas in it. And it was topped with uh, queso fresco that was mm -hmm. melted. I thought it was very tasty and very delicious. Right. I had the paella valenciana, uh -huh. which was the meat and fish paella, and that came out in a big cast iron pan, and my dad and I shared it, um, and it was steaming hot, just what we wanted on a cold, rainy night in San Francisco, and it was packed with fish, and the fish tasted very fresh and saffron and the rice added a nice floral component. It was just something that you wanted to savor and the beer cooled you down and yeah. you dug into this paella and flamenco was happening in the yeah. next yeah. room. You just, you go in there, I thought I had to pay to watch the show, mm -hmm. but the, one of the best performances for free. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You're at a beer pub with Spanish tapas and <laughs> flamenco. It just felt like a wonderful, cozy and celebratory space. Mm -hmm. What about, so any desserts? Mm, yes, the mm -hmm. warm, bittersweet sweet chocolate cake was just delicious. It was very dense and very rich and uh, uh, it was just wonderful. Yeah, yeah, so we had the churros and they were just melty, oozy, cinnamon. Fluffy. They melt in your mouth and you have a little cup of hot chocolate. Yeah. So you dip the churro in the hot mm -hmm. chocolate and then you have the hot chocolate to sip when it's you're perfect. finished with the churros. Yeah. It's perfect. All yeah. right, your restaurant, Omar, wrap it up for yeah. us. Yeah, good food, good vibes. Share a plate with some friends and enjoy the beer. All right, and Miriam? I would go to the bar and try the different beers and the sangria, which is delicious, and have a couple of tapas. And Natalie? Creative beers and delicious bites go for the flamenco and the wonderful app night out. <laughs> All right, if you would like to try Thirsty Bear Brewing Company, it's located on Howard Street in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-974-0905. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. Our next restaurant is a waterside retreat. As one of the last remaining historic settlements, which catered to the early tourist trade on the Northern California coast, Natalie Spot serves fresh seafood and produce grown right on the property. It's Nick's Cove. Nick's was born out of the passion of Nick and Francis Koyich. They bought it in 1930 and opened pretty much what it is today. 
Staying in our cottages is an experience that it's just not to be missed. From the minute that you arrive, you're greeted with barbecued oysters. There are beautiful marble floors in the bathroom that are heated so your toes are nice and toasty. In the morning, our servers bring you beautifully baked pastries, French press coffee and teas. We have an acre garden that is sheltered by a row of cypress trees, so it has these wonderful little microclimates and we're able to grow things that most people can't grow this close to the coast. A lot of the vegetables go onto the plates in the dining room and some of our fresh herbs are made into shrubs for our cocktail program. And we are neighbors to some of the most amazing cheesemakers across America. Like this is the place for cheese. I think one of the best vibes about Nick's is that it's for anybody. You can come here after you've been out kayaking and you're wet and you have your sandals on and you can come into a beautiful dining room or you can come for a special occasion, a birthday, an anniversary in beautiful outfits and you're still going to feel as welcome and as comfortable. Natalie, you have been going to Nick's Cove since you were young. Yeah, so I grew up in Marin and mm -hmm. we would tootle out um, on Highway 1 and go for a hike on a Sunday or celebrate a special occasion. Um, and we would end up at Nick's Cove with my family. Is there a food memory or something that you go back and you and you walk in the door at Nick's Cove and oh, <gasps> yeah, mm -hmm. fish and chips. Yeah. So the fish and chips comes out in this metal pan, very rustic, mm -hmm. and you have some delicious cod, incredibly fresh, and it's battered in this fluffy batter that just kind of breaks apart as you open it, and it's warm, and it's Lagunitas IPA beer battered, so it's also local in that sense, and you have the Kennebec fries, which just break apart, and they're crispy on the okay, outside. Okay, now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Okay. But. Omar, um, what did you have when you yeah, were? Yeah, I had the fish and chips as well. Yeah. It was it was light, it was, it was mm -hmm. tasty, mm -hmm. you could taste the fish, it was really fresh, and the tartar sauce was just amazing. I, I was dipping everything in the tartar sauce. It, mm -hmm. it had a very strong flavor, but it's not over Overwhelming. It was a nice portion too. I really liked it. And Miriam, what about you? I have to say the fish and chips for me, I tasted the cooking oil too much, ah, okay. which is a little mm -hmm. unpleasant. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved the clam chowder. Mm -hmm. It is just chock full oh, of fresh too. clams mm -hmm. and it's not thickened with flour. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very nice. Yeah, I agree. It's incredibly light and you don't feel burdened down by the cream that's often in clam chowder and mm -hmm. you can really right, taste the right. fresh clam. Obviously we're talking about Tamales Bay so we've got oysters mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. that oh, you yeah. will yes. certainly yeah. indulge in. You had some oysters yeah. when mm -hmm. you were there? I'm not sure what they were called but they had the barbecue oyster mm -hmm. sauce mm -hmm. on top. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Like it was just the right amount of barbecue sauce where you still taste the oyster you know and then you get this nice kick. It, it was sweet, it was tangy, it was just perfect, and, and I, I, I ate all of them. You ate all the oysters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. Although, Miriam? That's interesting because the sauce was too sweet for it's me. It's too sweet. Yeah. Uh -huh. You would have preferred the oysters without that sauce. Yes. That uh, the people sauce. that ordered the raw oysters with a, a little vinegar sauce and a little champagne mm -hmm. sauce, mm -hmm. those were very nice. Right. But we loved the ceviche. Mm -hmm. It had just the right amount of citrus and the smooth avocado that mm -hmm. went with it, and I thought that was excellent. And then mm -hmm. uh, I had the chipino. Yeah. The broth is a tomato puree. Mm -hmm. It's not the kind of chipino broth, broth that I'm used to. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't a lot of taste of garlic in it. So mm -hmm. I wasn't just So that wasn't that. one of your favorite dishes No, that at was all. a little disappointment. Right. What was really good with the crab was the crab benedict. Yes. It has mm -hmm. um, a layer of mashed avocado underneath the crab, a good healthy portion of mm -hmm. crab. And uh, it's just very nicely done. Yeah. Did you try the garlic fries? Oh, yeah. They're amazing. They're yeah. Well, you're yeah. still smelling it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's fresh garlic. It's not garlic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could taste it. It was in your breath for a few days. But it's <laughs> good. It is a beautiful place to look at the view, isn't it? Yes, oh. it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Stunning yeah. view. Stunning amazing. view. And the drive out, if you go out on the Lucas Valley Road mm -hmm. yes. route, it's right. just a beautiful drive yeah. there. Yes. Yeah. And did anyone walk down the, the dock yeah. uh, to the end? And there's the little warming hut. The little hut. warming yeah. hut that you yeah. can sit and bring your cocktail or your drink. Yeah, or, yeah. and you yeah. can order a cocktail mm -hmm. on the phone out there. There's oh, wow. a phone, so you can order one. Right. Or play the piano. Someone was playing the piano. <laughs> that was really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Did you have anything to drink? With uh, yes. They certainly have a an extensive. quite extensive <laughs> yeah. wine list. I got the margarita. Um, it was. That's uh, not on the wine list. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 <Sorry>. <laughs> they do have lots of great yeah. cocktails too. <laughs> I got it, I got it from the bar, um, and it was like a nice. 
amount of tequila in it. It was it was really strong, but the lime was just absolutely amazing. It was fresh, organic. It had a lot of flavor. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have a, a favorite drink that you get when you do? I or? do. Uh, so the craft cocktail is a cocktail that they make fresh from the garden, and it changes from time to mm -hmm. time. Um, but while I was there most recently, their cocktail included honey um, and terroir gin from St. George's, influenced by the Marin Mountains. And oh. so it's perfect after you've gone on a hike outside in Marin, and then you come back and you have this cocktail. And there are places so. to stay. You've mm -hmm. had too many margaritas. <laughs> yes. There are 12 cottages there <laughs> yeah. that you mm -hmm. can stay overnight yeah. and mm -hmm. stay for the weekend. Mm -hmm. That I are, to are stay. quite something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to leave. <laughs> what about any desserts? I had the butterscotch pot de Yes. And uh, that was lovely. It had home whipped whipped cream on it and mm -hmm. a very subtle brown sugar flavor to it. It was very pleasant. So we also enjoyed the butterscotch pot de creme mm -hmm. and it was very refreshing after eating a lot. Um, and it tasted like whipped cream with this lovely butterscotchy flavor. Um, and then they also brought us um, on the house a brownie sundae, which oh, we discovered. Yeah. It was this warm, melty brownie um, with uh, black cherries on it that were slightly boozy, and they added a nice punch. Yeah. And we discovered that if we dipped the brownie into the butterscotch, it was this amazing combination. Yeah. Like the butter, oh, it's very decadent. <laughs> All right, your restaurant, Natalie, wrap it up for us. Okay, toodle down to Tamales Bay and enjoy the cozy comforts of Nick's Cove. Okay, and Miriam. <laughs> uh, go for the fantastic view, the lovely drive out, and uh, order the ceviche and the clam chowder. And Omar. Yeah, uh, I think it was great. Um, scenic views, beautiful, freshly made fish um, entrees, and a, an extensive drink list. Amazing. Bar. All right, yeah. if you would like to try Nick's Cove, it's located on Highway 1 in Marshall. The telephone number is 415-663-1033. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are recommended. And the average meal per person without drinks is around $50. Post your favorite food shots on Instagram with the hashtag Bay Area Bites and have a chance to see your food pics on the show. Miriam's spot is both a Persian cafe and a Middle Eastern market. This welcoming business lives up to Persia's legendary tradition of hospitality. Kosh Amadid, or welcome to Middle East market. It was actually my dad's dream or idea to do something like this but uh, you know we decided to do it together we ended up coming in together and starting the business and it has been a, a dream come true. I am Hussein and my son Amir we are the owners of the Middle East, East market. market. The idea from the beginning was to have a place where people could come have good food for a good price a place where they could be themselves and just enjoy it have a you know, place for community and a place to look forward to coming to. Me and Amir always ask people, you know, whatever you like, you just tell us what you like and we can get it for you. This is my favorite of all of them. You know, they say, oh, I want this cheese or that candy or that rice or that spice, and we bring it for them. It really is amazing because we have lots of people who really actually count on us. And this is something that uh, I'm so happy for my son to witness that and witness it together. It's been a great response from the community, from support and... Their support is amazing. Really, I feel more blessed than anything else because I'm sharing this experience with my son and uh, at my age, and it could have never been so much sweeter. Now, Miriam, this place has a rich history, doesn't it? I discovered it when I went to get some baklava for mm -hmm. a meal I was making at home. And then I discovered the restaurant, and I've been going there ever since. And, you know, this is Persian cuisine or Iranian cuisine. Let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the flavor profiles. Well, one thing I really appreciate about Middle East Market is that they serve a number of long cooking stews. And one of my favorites is called Fesinjan. And they make the sauce by pounding the um, walnuts in a mortar and pestle until they're completely smooth. And then they cook it with pomegranate molasses for four or five hours. 
and it's sweet and sour and it's unctuous and it's just irresistible. Did you have a dish that, that you fell in love with? I really loved the chicken wrap. It, it was just amazing with the uh, pieces of chicken and you can tell there were so many spices on the chicken. It had a lot of flavor. It just, it all contrasted well with the, I believe there was yogurt and lettuce and tomato. Everything was fresh. Everything had its own unique flavor and it all just mixed perfectly. Right. I, I really you ate the whole wrap? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> what was your experience at Middle East? Morning? So we walked in knowing very little about Persian food um, and we told Danielle, who works at the counter, that we didn't know, really know what we were getting ourselves into. <laughs> and he said, okay, I'll take care of you. So he started spooning out a taste of each of the oh, stews. Wow. Um, and then we were still unsure what to order because everything was so delicious and we wanted everything. So he's like, okay, I'll just bring out some dishes. Oh. So we sat down and we ended up having a lot of the menu. We had three different types of stew. The fesinjan was definitely one of my favorites of all time. We also had a kubida kebab mm -hmm. and Daniel said that you put the sumac on top for health and digestion. So we did that and it added a really nice savory quality that kind of cut through the oil and made it feel a bit healthy healthier. Yes, healthy, exactly as you ate it. Mm -hmm. um, we also mm -hmm. really enjoyed um, one of the green stews. Um, oh, gourmet sabzi. Yes, yeah. that's the name, gourmet sabzi, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it had a slight sour flavor and kidney beans and it just felt incredibly healthy mm -hmm. um, and then you soak it up with your dill and fennel fava bean leaf rice um, which is just wonderfully seasoned and just what you want. Oh Persian just rice is mm -hmm. the best in the world. Yes. Yes. They make it by this really long process where it's soaked overnight with some salt mm -hmm. then it's drained and it's boiled in a pot of water for about mm -hmm. 10 minutes mm -hmm. then they drain it again and then they pile it up in a pot with some pot sliced potatoes or some bread on the bottom, mm -hmm. and it steams in its own water, mm -hmm. and every grain is separate. Yeah. And they brought out some ta tadik for us. Oh, they did. Which was phenomenal. Oh. I was blown away. And so Daniel said that in a Persian family, this is what everybody fights over. It's at the <laughs> bottom of the rice, mm -hmm. and it's the lavash, and the rice is fried on top, and it's crispy, and it soaks up the fesinjan in this like amazingly decadent way. And I was all over over that. We had the, a big plate um, and it was on the house of the Tadiq and I just kept devouring it. My poor husband didn't. Did you get the Tadiq? Did you get the Tadiq? Oh yes I did. I didn't want to talk about it because I don't want them to run out when I go there. <laughs> what else did you have besides the wrap? I got the Kobide kebab. Mm -hmm. That was, it was a nice generous portion of rice uh, and then the two pieces of this generous beef mixed with lamb crushed together mm -hmm. and made into like almost like a sausage looking mm -hmm. thing. And it had a lot of flavor, but I needed something to wash it down. So I ended up going into the grocery store, bought like a drink, and I was just mm -hmm. drinking it away. <laughs> um, but it was really good. If you want to get something to drink, you can go to the refrigerator case. And they have really interesting yogurt drinks that yeah. are Persian. My friend got the same thing. He's like a quarter Middle Eastern, and he said it reminded him of home. His grandmother used to make that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an acquired taste. It's, mm -hmm. it's sour, um, mm -hmm. but... It goes really well at, with at the cuisine. The, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And they are so friendly. Yes. They are just the nicest people. And mm -hmm. like you experienced, they're really happy to talk about the food and educate you about it. I felt like I was in somebody's house almost. Yeah. Even yes. though it's a market, it yes. felt so homey and I yeah. felt so cared for. It was really they're very cool. humble people, mm -hmm. very nice. Yeah. You can tell it's a small business because as soon as he's done preparing, he's helping someone in the grocery mm -hmm. store find what they need. Mm -hmm. He's on the phone. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. very nice people. Well, and dessert are certainly something to be discussed. <laughs> well, they have uh, three or four different kinds of baklava, uh -huh. and they're not overly sweet and sticky, mm -hmm. and they're each a little different, which is really fun to try. And then they have many flavors of Turkish delight, mm -hmm. which is a candy. You get a small square of it, but lots of exotic uh, flavors. They have saffron, pistachio, rose water, plus chocolate. Right. That's the best part about going to Istanbul. It's mm -hmm. Turkish delight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Miriam, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. For fabulous Persian food, in a very friendly atmosphere, and in a grocery that you can walk around and pick out exotic uh, Middle Eastern ingredients afterwards, it's just a really fun and delicious experience. All right, and Omar? Yeah, truly authentic Persian food. Uh, fresh and a lot of variety of items to choose from, even in the grocery store. Okay, and Natalie? A complete sensory experience. Go for the warm, hearty stews and service. 
All right, if you would like to try Middle East Market, it's located on San Pablo Avenue in Berkeley. The telephone number is 510-704-8800. It's open for shopping, lunch, and dinner every day. And the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. I have to thank my fantastic guests on this week's show, Natalie Ashby, who took us to the coast visiting Nick's Cove in Marshall. Omar Montez showcased beers, tapas, and dancing at Thirsty Bear Brewing Company in San Francisco. And Miriam Kaysen, who shared a Persian welcome and delicious fare at Middle East Market in Berkeley. Now, we really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Or better yet, post your favorite food shots on Instagram with the hashtag Bay Area Bites and have a chance to see your food pics on the show. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check, please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and where you'll find my notes on the wines and libations we're drinking today. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco and I'll see you then. Cheers. And cheers to you. Nice work, you guys. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world iFlyOAK.com. It's the national recognition for healthcare equality. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Redwood Credit Union offers personal and business banking, mobile access, and nationwide ATMs. It's banking for people who call this home and the future we're building together. Redwood Credit Union. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com.